Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a non-spoiler book review for Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is an adult fantasy story that follows our main character named Mia Corvere, and despite the fact that this world is unique and gritty and dark and bloody, at the root of the story, the main setup is that our main character is out for revenge. We've definitely seen this setup before, something terrible happens to our main character and now they want to attain the power that it takes to take out the person who did these terrible things to them. It's not the most unique setup. However, I definitely think that Jay Kristoff takes a simple premise and puts it within a very interesting world. A lot of times when we think of world building in our fantasy stories, we think of these lush, vivid, long descriptions of these beautiful, magical places, and that's really not at all what the world building is like for this story, but that's not to say that the world building is absent. World building is a tricky thing to talk about when talking about a fantasy book because so many people feel so differently about how they want the world building delivered, what it means, what it entails, but in this particular story for me, I felt the world building was fantastic because it accomplished its goal, which was that it felt like a different world. The way in which the story is told definitely plays a role in how some aspects of the world building are delivered. So for the most part, this story feels like third person, but there are footnotes where a narrator is basically breaking the fourth wall and speaking to you very directly. And often they are speaking to you in these footnotes of random things in their world and very specific random things. Those elements are not quite always super pertinent to the story. However, I have read another series that did this called the Barnabas Trilogy. It's actually a middle grade series. And I remember I was so turned off from the footnote approach when I first picked up that series. And so when I first picked up this series, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to feel, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this because eventually I came around to love it in the Barnabas Trilogy, but it's a middle grade series. And so it's not as dark and dense. And a lot of times it was kind of expected to have these silly side tangents. And in this one, I was thinking that I'm going into this dark, gritty story and some of these things are almost amusing and humorous and I don't know if it fits. It was just not what I was expecting. But if you go in knowing that these footnotes are often just going to be amusing tidbits about the world, I think you'll enjoy them far more than you would if you were thinking like, oh my gosh, do I have to know all this information? That's not to say that is the only way in which world building is established. Those are like the icing on the cake. Those are the little extra things that get elaborated on. But the core of the world building is still, I would say, in the main narration. So you still will find that how characters behave, their beliefs, the world itself, literally how their world functions with the amount of daylight hours and the suns, all that kind of stuff, that is in the actual story itself, not necessarily those footnotes. Everything down to how the characters talk, how they curse, their mannerisms, their gods and goddesses, all of that kind of stuff is ingrained and weaved throughout the story. So when I say that I think this world felt very different, felt very real, it's because sometimes it was delivered in a way that was very subtle and other times it was so in your face that it was almost like the author was sort of mocking your typical world building approach. Sometimes it's almost impossible with world building to not have these giant info dumps. And it was almost like Jay Kristoff knew that and decided anytime I wanna actually have something fun and random in here, I'm just gonna put it in a footnote. That's kind of how it came across. And that I think is true of so much of the story I, again, when I first when I first picked this up, I was thinking, this is gonna be dark and gritty. It's, it's gonna be like all the other grim dark stories I've read. And it's really not. I really feel that Jay Kristoff, in how he describes things, in the similes and metaphors that he uses, in his interesting means of, of how he compares things, I think a lot of times he's sort of kind of mocking, the, mocking dark stories while still telling a dark story. Basically to sum up, I'm saying that I don't know that the book always took itself that seriously. I do want to emphasize though that the book is dark. When I say it doesn't take itself that seriously, I'm not saying that it's lighthearted, good fun. It's not that really at all. It's still dark and it's still very, very raw, but it kind of takes things that normally are very romanticized in storytelling 
and it makes them very bleak. The ways in which Jay Kristoff des describes people's features or people dying or what it's like to fight, just he finds very interesting ways to describe things. It's, it's, it's eccentric. I think that's the best way to put it. It's a very eccentric story. Definitely very unique. I've not seen too many authors use this strange approach to their storytelling and I've not seen too many people outside of Grimdark go into the bleakness of so many of the things that Jay Kristoff describes, but because of all this, because of how he chooses to tell the story, I'll admit that it took a long time for me to feel connected to our main character, Mia. That's not to say that Mia isn't a well fleshed out character. She has a lot of drive. She is willing to go through so much to try and gain what she needs to do what she thinks is right. She's compelling. She's also kind of coming into her own. She's going through a lot of difficult things while trying to maintain her humanity. So there's a lot of things about her character that I really enjoyed. I'm just very used to your typical, here's third person and here's a description of what this character is thinking or here's literally what this character is thinking in italics. I'm used to that or first person, which is here's everything in the character's head because they're the one telling you the story. The last thing I want to touch on is the antagonists in this story. So because Mia is out for revenge, she isn't quite in a place when we first meet her to just go out and go get that revenge. She's got to work her way up to having the power to go about doing this. So there's a lot of the story that takes place in a certain area where she's being trained essentially to become an assassin. This is how she wants to try and achieve her goals. So it's a bit of a of a school setting in a way. It's a very morbid school in a, in a lot of uh, ways, but it's still a school setting. If you like school settings, I think you'll enjoy that aspect of this. It's just that the school setting, one thing that can kind of make school settings less of a driving setting, a thing that moves the plot forward, is that the antagonist isn't really present in a lot of school settings. The characters are leveling up, if you will. And so the antagonist is kind of this looming thing off in the background that you know is bad that you know eventually our character is going to face off with, but you're not going to get a really in-depth, intimate view of the antagonist. It's not one of those stories. It's just, this is a threat off in the background. There's some twists and turns along the way, maybe some people that you hate that Mia encounters, but I love a good villain. I love somebody that I can root for and fist pump when you take him out. And you care about Mia, you want her to do those things. So for her sake, you can like fist bump, like, yeah, that's right, you go do that. But I don't know that you really have that feeling of if they get the antagonist, you're going to be jumping for joy, you're gonna be really pumped. It's just not that kind of an antagonist in this first book. I'm definitely very curious to see what all of your thoughts are on this story. I can for sure see this being a hit or a miss for a lot of people, and I know that kind of is true. People really adore this when they adore it, and then people really hate this when they hate it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all later. Bye.